Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 8th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, 2016 is off to the worst start for stock markets ever, despite intervention and trading halts. And it's not just Germany. Austrian cops tell women not to go outside as rape gangs take over. And as part of Obama's gun control, we're told, buy a smart gun. You know, it's for the children. Why can't you say the gun cannot be engaged, the trigger cannot be pulled absent that identification? Some version of that, smart gun. But what about children that have protected themselves and others? A male enters, he has a gun in his hand, and he points it toward this young man. At that point, the young man fired his handgun at the suspect, and the suspect was hit. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 this week we've heard a lot about the president's proposed gun actions, these executive actions that he says that Congress needs to get in line with him. Now, regardless of what you think about the president and what he's trying to do here, saying that the Congress needs to get in line with what you're pushing is, if you don't want to say dictatorial, it's definitely inching, inching towards that. And I want to look at the president's fact sheet. Uh, he has a fact sheet about the new executive orders that he wants to push through. And uh, I had a lot of questions when I first heard this press conference about uh, some particular things that he wanted to get through on this uh, session here. And I will say that I may have jumped a gun saying that he wanted to register things such as uh, giving family members firearms. So I, I was off the mark on this. But on this particular angle, when we're looking at people who are engaged in businesses and what that means, engaged in the business of selling a firearm. Now, most people would think, you know, some FFL dealer, obviously a brick and mortar store, but he went on to expand it a little bit, and I want to read this example to you. And this is from the White House website. This is not my, you know, uh, ad lib here. This is what they said. For example, courts have upheld convictions for dealing without a license when as few as two firearms were sold or when even one or two transactions took place when other factors were also present. So which is to say, you know, you don't have to be a big volume guy. You don't have to have a brick and mortar store or, you know, even a successful online store, if you're involved in two, as little as two transactions with other factors, that could be considered uh, being a dealer or being engaged in the business. Now, what these other factors are, I don't know, but this gives me a whole lot of concern that if you, uh, for example, you go out, uh, you know, you, you meet somebody at the in a parking lot, whatever, you say, come over to my house, I'll sell you a couple guns in my garage. Okay, so you're selling two firearms to the person. Now, what are these other factors that could have you considered to be uh, engaged in business as far as the uh, eyes of the law are concerned. And that's the kind of thing that really concerns me about this whole deal. It's a lot of iffy things that aren't really explained uh, fully, in my opinion, for the people to decide on before uh, this type of legislation takes effect. Now, other people had other issues with what, with what the president had to say. And one of them was the widow of Chris Kyle, the uh, decorated sniper. And she confronted Obama about his gun actions and says the new rules give people false hope. I want to think that we can make a law and people will follow it. By the very nature of, of looking at the people who hurt our loved ones here, I don't know that any of them would have been stopped by the background check. I want the hope and the hope that I have the right to protect myself, that I don't end up to be one of these families, that I have the freedom to carry whatever weapon I feel I need. And she wasn't the only one. 
Also at this town hall forum on CNN, they had a survivor, survivor of rape. And she's saying, President Obama, can't you see that these laws that you're trying to push through are just going to make it more difficult for people like myself to purchase a firearm and make my children less safe? It seems like being able to purchase a firearm of my choosing and being able to carry that wherever my, me and my family are, it seems like my basic responsibility as a parent at this point. I have been unspeakably victimized once already, and I refuse to let that happen again to myself or my kids. So why can't your administration see that these restrictions that you're putting to make it harder for me to own a gun or harder for me to take that where I need to be is actually just making my kids and I less safe? Now, the president, to an extent, was correct in saying that she would still be able to buy a firearm. He, she would just have to go through the system that he wants to lay out, whether it be a background check or maybe even purchasing some type of smart firearm. We'll talk about kids using smart firearms here in a little bit. But for right now, I want to do a throwback from the vault and talk about Mayor Bloomberg and his, you know, mayors against uh, mothers having whatever. I can't they keep changing the name. I can't keep it straight. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this ad and we'll talk about it in real time, analyze it in real time and show you all the fallacies of this anti-gun commercial and why it's really, in reality, a pro-gun commercial. 911, what's your emergency? It's my ex. He's trying to break in. Do you have a restraining order? This is my yes, house. please, my right, let's pause right here. there. Open the pause door. right there. So the ex is trying to break into the house. She has a restraining order against the ex. To me, that's a pretty big reason of why you should have a firearm in the home. Well, let, let's go ahead and continue with our analysis here. He just broke in the door. You need to come now. Get away from him. Hey, hey. Hip pause. Hip pause. Once again, so the ex has actually broken into the home. She has already called 911. And once again, as I always say, I'm not knocking the cops. But let's say a good response time is two minutes. All right. So it took this guy, what, 30 seconds to kick into the door. So he's already inside the home. He has a child. Now, if the woman had been armed, she could have shot the guy as he was busting through the door, which, you know, is pretty much... What I personally would do if somebody was trying to break into my home, once they kick in that door, they cross that threshold. I got a nice big flat target to shoot at. That's when I'm going to pull the trigger if it is necessary. Let's go ahead and continue with the piece. I'm taking him. Okay, so now uh, the woman has been shot. You hear the baby crying in the background. And of course, do these type of things happen is very unfortunate. And also in the president's plan, he has a, a domestic violence type of thing that he's looking at. And I'm not so much against that. It's just some of the other measures that I have an issue with. But in this piece, so the woman calls the police. Uh, she has a restraining order. The person actually breaks into her home. To me, all of those are very good reasons why you should have a firearm in the home and be able to shoot the intruder. And it doesn't even have to be the ex-husband if it's some guy kicking in your door at three in the morning some stranger, you know, he thinks you, you know, have a nice PlayStation or whatever. He wants to come to your house and steal it. Those are all good reasons as to why you need to be armed or have the ability to arm yourself uh, independent of any type of background check or uh, RFID. Let's say you do have a smart gun, right? You go get your gun. Uh, your hands are sweaty. Uh, you just got out. You got out the shower. You got soap on your hands. Whatever reason, it, uh, it interferes with your finger on that RFID. And now I can't read your fingerprint scan. So that, to me, that's a pretty big issue to uh, consider before you go out and purchase a smart gun. Now, once again, I'm not against smart guns per se. If you choose to go out and buy one, that's fine. My issue is if, and it's an if at this point, if they want to mandate that uh, the gun manufacturers have to make them, or if they want to mandate that gun stores have to have them, or if they want to mandate that you have to have one of these uh, type of features on your firearm to purchase it, those are the questions I have an issue with. And like I said, they're at this point, just ifs. Now, our Texas governor here, uh, Greg Abbott, he's been very outspoken about these new proposals from Obama. And he says he wants to override Obama's tyranny. I guess the headline is from Adon Salazar. It says Texas Governor Greg Abbott made good on his promise to challenge the president, president's gun control initiatives Friday, calling for a constitutional convention of U.S. states to create several new amendments aimed at reasserting states' rights. Now, I was talking to David Knight about this a little bit earlier. And I'm not knocking Greg Abbott here. I think uh, he's, he has the best of intentions, and I do applaud him for being proactive. But David Knight made the very good point that we wouldn't have to add more amendments if we would just follow the ones that we already have, such as, example, the Tenth Amendment, where it says that you can't give, uh, the, or the, the feds can't take powers that are not already granted to them, which is to say you have the power within the state to say no 
to a federal grab or federal mandates, whatever they may be. And David Knight also made the point, if they're not going to follow amendment number 10, they're not going to follow amendment number 40 or amendment number 100 or as many amendments as you want to add to it. If they don't follow what's already in there, the first 10, they're not going to follow anything else. So once again, you know, a hat, hats off to Greg Abbott for being proactive, but let's just follow the stuff that's already in there. And now we see CNN, you know, President Obama was on CNN this past week. And uh, now we have a CNN op-ed piece where they're saying that we need to ban the guns and declare a national state of emergency. And this is Elliot Feynman. And he was a uh, proponent of the National Gun Victims Action Council. And he wants the president to follow through on his recent gun control efforts by monitoring ammunition sales and banning those on terror watch lists from buying guns. Now, once again, uh, as we've seen many times before, they try to circumvent the whole gun control argument by saying we're not banning things outright. We're just trying to limit or put uh, common sense reforms as to how they're used. Such an example, limiting or monitoring ammunition sales. Like they're not taking your gun away. They're just going to monitor your amount of ammunition and say maybe you can't have that much ammunition. Same thing with magazines. They're not going to take your gun away. They're just going to tell you how many rounds you can have in your magazine or uh, cosmetic features on your firearms if you live in the state of New York. Just all these different silly things that they're not coming and kicking in your door and taking away your guns, absolutely not. But they can limit the way that you use your firearms. And it says this can be achieved without congressional approval by Obama enacting a national state of emergency that scares the gun lobby and pro-gun lawmakers, writes Feynman. So once again, they're making it very clear that they don't want you to have a, a firearm in your home or be as free as you want to be to express it because we see in Obama's legislation, he wants to get rid of things such as gun trust and a gun trust of, let's say, for example, if myself and Joe Biggs want to buy a gun suppressor for an AR-15, right? We could go get a uh, gun trust and we can both use it, even though we have uh, no criminal history as he's a combat veteran. I have a clean record, nothing more than a uh, traffic ticket or so. Obama is saying that criminals get into these things and will go buy, you know, a suppressor or a a fully automatic rifle and then go commit a crime with it. If that does happen, I'm pretty sure those are very, very rare. Somebody who's going to rob a liquor store is just going to get a 38 snub nose revolver, whether they buy it legal or black market or whatever else. The black market, of course, assuming that they have some type of prior felony charge. And then they're going to go out there and commit the crime anyway. Nobody's going to go through the long, lengthy process of trying to get approved for a uh, gun trust if that is the case. Now, I want to throw to a report. I did a few years back talking about how smart guns endanger children because I see this article right here. Five times kids defended themselves from crooks using guns. And one in particular was a boy in North Carolina uh, who defended his grandmother when somebody broke into their home. She pulled out, the, the boy pulled out the shotgun and shot the intruder. So this is why you need to have uh, your kids trained how to use firearms. That's why I do recommend if you are gonna have a firearm in the home, take your kids out to the range, say, hey, Teach them basic gun safety, like my dad did with me and my sisters and my cousins. He said, hey, this is what a firearm is. You don't point it at people. This is not a toy. You got water guns and other toys. This is not a toy. Teach you responsible ways to use the firearm. And this is something that your children need to know if you're going to have a firearm in the home. As citizens in New York refuse to register their weapons with politicians who have armed bodyguards, new schemes to infringe upon Second Amendment rights are already in the works. The Justice Department is clamoring for American gun owners to have smart guns. Smart guns that wouldn't operate without biometrics and or some type of proximity device, such as a watch. You may say, well, what's wrong with that? In Iowa, a father was forced to leave a gun range because the state said his daughters were too young to fire a handgun even with adult supervision. You may also be saying, guns and children don't mix. A child should never be allowed anywhere near a gun. A male enters, he has a gun in his hand, and he points it toward this young man. At that point, the young man fired his handgun at the suspect, and the suspect was hit. But it, it surprised me a little bit, you know, that he, he would do something like this, but I'm, in a way, I'm glad he did. I'm glad his father trained him for this. When I was back there on the phone with 911, I heard the bathroom light turn on that was leading to the closet. And when I saw the door handle turn, 